Coming up on WTV News, November is American Diabetes Month. Find out how three students at Warburg are managing this disease. And today we celebrate those who fought for our freedom. Local veterans tell us their stories from their time of service. And the Waverly Shell Rock Middle School has developed a new way to evaluate their students' work. You're watching WTV News, live on Wartburg Television. From the Grand Price Studio, breaking news, local coverage, and sports. This is WTV News. Good evening and welcome to WTV News. I'm Ashley Davis. And I'm Nicole Lyons. This week's elections brought new leadership into Waverly City Hall and Council. Voters elected Reverend Chuck Infeld as the next mayor of Waverly in last Tuesday's election. With 1,332 votes to Dwayne Little's 385, Infeld will serve in the city's highest post beginning on January 6th of next year. West Gage Gade edged out opponent and Warburg student Jacob Martin for the Ward 3 council seat. David Renez Chuck grabbed the at-large seat on the city council over fellow candidate Chris Gooster. Renez Chuck will replace retiring council member Kathy Olson. The Waverly Planning and Zoning Commission met Thursday to discuss changes to Waverly rental ordinances. During the meeting, planning and zoning members reviewed sample ordinances for possible adoption. This is part of a year-long discussion to improve rental housing safely in the city of Waverly. The Zoning Commission hopes to present final ideas to the Waverly City Council. Students and faculty had the opportunity to learn about the Lutheran Volunteer Corps this week. The Corps focuses on building community, working for justice, and living simply. The program unites students with full-time positions at numerous nonprofit organizations. Joanne Ott, a 1998 alumna and the current Admissions and Alumni Relations Director for the Corps, says the program is a powerful tool for the students. For people who have excitement about community and justice and sustainability, having the opportunity to live those values in their day-to-day -day life, I think really sets them on a path for, for a long time in the future. In honor of Veterans Day today, WTV talked with some local veterans who each served in a different war. WTV's Jacqueline Schutte joins us now to tell us about their experiences. All of these local veterans have something in common, a shared experience, one that only a war veteran would understand. For World War II veteran Les Zelly, his story begins in Eisenach, Germany, Waverly's sister city. By the time we got to Eisenach, uh, you know, the Germans were pretty tired of war. They actually, many of them were just very glad to see us. His military experience ended with a ring. Oh, that, that was a good part about it. The Army, I found my wife in North Carolina. For Vietnam veteran Ed Wabana, he would not only face battles on the field, but also back at home. We had to walk past this one fence, and uh, there was people there hollering at us, uh, calling us everything they could. Uh, calling, I remember them calling me a baby killer. And we used to not even tell anybody that we even was over in Vietnam because uh, people just didn't understand what we went through. And for Corey Stevens, his service in the military would lead to a lifelong calling to help others. Today, he wears two uniforms, one for the Waverly Police Department and the other for the U.S. Army. It was a great experience. There was a lot of scary times. Um, we, we did take fire quite a bit. Veterans are all around us, and on Monday, we get the chance to honor men and women like Corey, Ed, and Les, who have served our country. And as we approach this Veterans Day, a little advice on honoring their service. Be there for them. Uh, tell them thanks and listen to them. If they have something to say, listen to them. A, a simple thank you, you know, for your service. Today, the WSR High School honored Donald Nichols at their Veterans Day program. He was a Waverly native who was killed in Afghanistan. Coming up on WTV, diabetes awareness. Find out why it's important for you to know more about this disease. And students may have trouble getting a spot at Warburg West for next summer. Find out why in two minutes. Every year, the American Diabetes Association dedicates the whole month of November to diabetes awareness. 
People are encouraged to wear light blue to honor those who fight the everyday battle against diabetes. This week I spoke to some Warburg students who have been impacted by this disease. My name is Cassie Ricky and I have type 1 diabetes. My name is Connor O'Brien and I have type 1 diabetes. I'm Matt Castley and I have type 1 diabetes. These three Warburg students are among millions who live in the United States with this lifelong disease. I can almost guarantee that everyone at Warburg College knows someone personally affected by the disease and can relate and know how much of a struggle it can be. Diabetes is diagnosed in people when their pancreas doesn't use insulin properly or when it completely stops making insulin. Type 1 diabetes is typically diagnosed in people at a young age, and people who are overweight tend to be at the highest risk for type 2 diabetes. For both these types, though, genetics can play a factor in a diagnosis, but that isn't always the case. It personally is really upsetting when they mistake type 1 and type 2. You know, they accuse me of eating too much sugar when I was little. Personally, I don't have it anywhere in my family. I just was diagnosed with it randomly. Nearly 26 million adults and children in the United States have diabetes. It is important to keep their blood sugar at a healthy range to avoid health risk. They do this by taking their insulin, eating right, and exercising. People don't know the disease unless they live it. The highs and lows. People always, when I say I'm low, they're just, oh, do you need a shot? And, no, I need something to eat. Cassie, Connor, and Matt all have experiences playing sports at the college level. Although having high and low blood sugars may sometimes limit their performance, they have learned what they need to do to get back in the game. Shots and finger pricks and fruit snacks, it can be a struggle, but it's not terrible because I've had it for so long. I've been playing sports for so long that I know basically how my body's going to adjust. You know, when you're low or high, you're not playing up to par what you know you can, and then it's frustrating. To this date, there is not a known cure for diabetes, but as research continues, promising advances give those living with this disease vision of a day that is free of finger pricks and shots. I just don't want people to think this disease defines us. It's something that, you know, you worry about every single day for the rest of your life. Um, that's hard. I mean, even if you do everything right, it's going to be higher or lower than what you need it to be or want it to be, I guess. No, Ashley, I understand you have a personal connection with diabetes. Yes, I do. I have a personal connection. When I was 11 years old, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and with proper health care, I've been able to manage it for nine years. And the Warburg West program has reached its full com student capacity for summer enrollment. The maximum of 20 students have applied and have been accepted into the program for summer of 2014. The program allows students to live in Denver, Colorado while taking cl college classes and working at internships. Spots are still open to apply fall and winter term in the next school year. This isn't the first time the program has reached its full capacity, however, and Warburg West co-director Bonita Bach credits students' influence on others to come to Denver. They had such a great experience, which is typical of Warburg West students to have a good experience in their internship, but this group took it upon themselves to really come back and talk to other students about it. If you would like to apply, you can go to www.warburg.edu slash west. Environmental Sustainability Coordinator Ann Duncan says bike thefts have been, at a, have been a problem at Warburg because of students not locking them up. Students are encouraged to register their bikes with security. By doing this, students will get a sticker to put on their bike in hopes of making it easier to locate if it is ever lost or stolen. A way to decrease the chances of having your bike stolen is to lock its frame to a bike rack. Somebody, you know, maybe culturally they don't see a problem with taking a bike that's not locked up, so they come from an urban area that has a bike share program that's open, or, you know, for some reason they just, they, they think that it's okay to take a bike that's not locked. This past Thursday, Warburg held their annual Fall Business Mock Interview Day. The event is for business majors and is designed as a tool to help prepare them for future job interviews. For the event, Warburg brought in representatives from businesses in the Cedar Valley. The representatives set up a mock-style interview to represent what a student will encounter in their job search. Interviewer Jeff Sandwalt says he can easily tell when a student has done a mock interview before coming in for the real thing. Coming up on WTV News. 
a new grading system has been implemented at Waverly Shell Rock Middle School. And students have the opportunity to donate toys this Christmas to kids in need. Stay tuned to find out how. Waverly Shell Rock Middle School has made some changes this year. WTV's Elizabeth Jewett joins me now to tell us a little bit more. Ashley, WSR Middle School has implemented a new grading system that takes a closer look at how students understand academic concepts. The new grading system talks more about what your student can do, and more specifically about what they do that meets the standard. It's less vague than the ABC grading. The teachers of Waverly Shell Rock Middle School made the decision last year to test out a new standards-based grading system, and because of its success, decided to implement it through grades K through 8. The system focuses on a student's understanding of necessary concepts according to the student's grade level. And we use a 3-2-1 scale in which uh, we decided they're, they're either meeting the standard, partially meeting the standard, or not meeting the standard. Many teachers agree that the new system gives students a second chance and allows kids to see what they excel in and what they need to improve on. Really sharing the ownership of learning with them because ultimately they're the ones that have to have to, to learn and they make the decision and the choice if they learn or not. Many parents of the students have had a hard time understanding the switch because it is so different from the original ABC grading system. Teachers say they have seen an immense improvement in the motivation of their reluctant learners. These students are able to focus on improvement rather than a letter grade. At the end of the day yesterday they were saying there's no doubt this is the right work. Our kids are learning more than they've ever learned. We're better teachers than we've ever been but we feel our teachers really care about our kids. The teachers of Waverly Shell Rock Middle School are continuing to improve the grading system and look forward to seeing their students' learning improve through it. Thousands were forced to evacuate early last Monday morning as Typhoon Haiyan stormed through the Philippines. Before reaching northeastern Vietnam, the storm was killed up the storm has killed a reported 10,000 people so far. This tragedy has left people without food, electricity, and water. And medical supplies are beginning to run short. WTV will share with you next week how one Warburg student's family has been affected firsthand by this storm. Students are invited to a prayer vigil held in honor of those affected by Typhoon Haiyan. The service will be held on Wednesday during the weekday chapel service. Alumna Shabira Bako serves in the Peace Corps in Tobloco City, which was at the center of the storm. She is able to communicate and is okay, but she says there is a massive loss of life. Pastor Ramona and Brian encourage students to take the time to pray and to grieve with our neighbors in the Pacific. Coming up next on WTV News, Warburg players took to the stage last week for their annual fall performance. Find out more later in the show. And the Wartburg volleyball team captured an Iowa Conference Championship over the weekend. Would the men and women's soccer teams follow the suit? Find out later on Sports Night. This weekend, the Wartburg players held their annual fall play. For this year's production, the players performed Sarah Roll's Dead Man's Cell Phone. The play's main character, Gene, finds a man dead in a cafe. She then spends the rest of the play trying to console his grieving loved ones. With clever dialogue and an interesting cast of characters, Roll's piece hits, an, hits on a number of deep issues in today's culture. It's very poetic, actually. If you were to read the script, you would see that the lines by Sarah Roll, who wrote the play, it's very poetic. And there's nice little nuances throughout the writing, and the actors bring it out greatly, too. The social work department is gearing up to once again bring Christmas joy to those who are less fortunate. Warburg's annual holiday shop program will provide toys to nearly 900 kids just this year alone. The event is set to take place December 9th and 10th at the Redeemer Lutheran Church in Waverly. We are looking, they are looking for volunteers to help with the event and donation trees will soon be up on campus. The families are pretty priceless. Um, just knowing that when they leave the shop, um, that, that, that may be all that their children receive for Christmas. And knowing that even that little bit will put a smile on their kids' faces and brighten up their days. ETK is hosting an event that some may recognize from last year. Last year, musicians were brought in from Midwest Dueling Pianos to create a one-of-a-kind show based on the audience's request. 
This year, we will be seeing them again. The Dueling Pianos event will be this Thursday from 7 to 10 p.m. in the ballrooms. Snacks and hot chocolate will be there, and there, will, there is no cost for entry. Student Senate is raising money for Connor Mason, the younger brother of Warper student Avery Mason. T-shirts have been designed for Connor, who is 15 years old. Connor was diagnosed with stage 4 brain cancer in July 2010 at just 13 years old. The money raised will go towards the Mason family for medical expenses. expenses. The shirts will be sold for $10 and can be ordered through Jenna Manders. The Wartburg Dance Team is hoping to reach a new level. They will compete in the annual Iowa State Dance and Drill Team Championship. They placed in the top six in recent years in the Palm Division and seventh in Jazz. The dance team hopes to bring home a trophy with their new talent from the freshmen and returning members. That's all the time we have tonight for WTV News. Thank you for joining us, but stay tuned for an all-new Sports Night coming up next.